Hi, welcome back to The Domesticated Bear. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about clothing maintenance and specifically we're gonna make a mend or repair to a sweater. We've got a small mock hole in the sweater. We'll see a close up of that in just a second. And uh, we're gonna make sure that we can repair that uh, in as least obtrusive way as possible. So you can see this is our sweater. Uh, it's a, I'd say a medium to lightweight wool knit. And we've got a hole right here where my finger is, you can see that. Uh, probably from a moth, might have gotten snagged on something, but we're gonna presume since it's a wool sweater, uh, that it's a moth. This is just no kind of tear, it's kind of a void. Um, so after we get this done, we're also going to then have the sweater clean to make sure that there's no other issues with it. Uh, so here's a quick tip. You know these things that you get with uh, sweaters sometimes when you buy them? A lot of these, uh, you can see a lot of these are from Banana Republic. Um, save them, find a place to keep them all together. It doesn't take a second to, to stick them somewhere when you first get the sweater, but then remembering where that was is usually the problem. So if you find just like a Ziploc bag and you just put it in a drawer or put it in your sock drawer or in your closet, somewhere where you know you'll be able to find those, the chances of having the right one for your sweater um, may be low, but if you don't even save it, then you're never gonna have that. So miracle of miracles, and the first time this has ever happened, I actually have the right one. I have the one that still matches this. If I weren't gonna use this, uh, I would try to find uh, a yarn that would match as, as close as possible. The biggest issue here is gonna be the weight. Even though this is a fairly uh, lightweight yarn, I would still probably wanna split this down. It's a, it's a two ply right now, I mean there's two strands wrapped around each other. If I were gonna try to mend it with this, which wouldn't be the worst option in the world, I'd still split it down to half of what that is. So it's just really uh, thin and soft and hopefully unnoticeable. But, like I said, we've luckily got the exact match because, I don't know, somebody up there likes me. And uh, we're gonna use this to make our repairs. Uh, the tools we're gonna need, we'll need scissors just for, for basic kind of uh, sewing, cutting stuff. And um, I've got a big pack of needles here. The reason I have such a big pack is because we're gonna use two different kinds. One we're gonna use is a true kind of mending or darning needle. It's usually a little bit fatter. It's got a long eye so you can get the, um, the yarn in there. And then the tip is not very sharp. It's kind of rounded. Cause we're not trying to stitch through the fibers. We're trying to go kind of around them. And then we'll use a standard sewing needle, whatever your kind of preference is, to actually use some other thread to baste a perimeter around the place where we're going to make our mend. So I'm gonna get that stuff set up and we'll be right back. So I've turned the sweater uh, inside out. So we're gonna work from the inside actually. And I've got a threaded piece uh, or a threaded needle here in a lighter color so I can see it really easily. And I'm gonna carefully just baste a square about an inch wide around um, that hole. Uh, so an inch across. And um, for that, we don't need to tie any knots. Just kind of, uh, if you wanna do a double stitch, you can, but really, it, we're gonna take this out later. We don't want it to create any more problems. It's really just giving us a place to stop and turn around. Okay, so hopefully you can see I've got this little square base that around here, and that really only takes like a minute to do, and it really gives you a nice clean edge as to where you're gonna turn around with your other stitching. Uh, if you were in a big rush, you could maybe not do that, but uh, this isn't the thing you wanna do in a rush anyway, I feel like. Um, usually you're doing this because you care about that garment and you want to save it and preserve it. So take the time to do that. It'll make your, your end result a little better. Uh, I've got my darning needle threaded up with my matching yarn. I chose to do just one strand. They gave me kind of a three ply. So I separated that out and I hit that with a little steam because uh, it actually when it came off the card, it looks like this. It's got all those kind of corners and kinks. It's going to work a little better if it's smooth, like kind of like normal sewing thread. So again, I'm not gonna use any knots. Uh, I'm gonna leave a little tail on the inside of the sweater. Nobody's ever gonna know it's there. It's not gonna hurt anything. So I'm gonna start, so if here's my hole in the sweater, I'm gonna start just a little bit to one side of it so I can start laying these threads in. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of catch through this, uh, this knit in the back and kind of float along, turn around here and come back. Turn around here and come back. And really the key here, is to make sure that we're not pulling anything too tight. Uh, with men's or really kind of almost any uh, hand sewing, the thing that gives it away is if you pull just a little too tight and then suddenly it announces itself that it's there. Uh, and you generally don't want that. You want it to kind of blend into the background 
Uh, this, you know, there's nowhere to kind of hide the stitching in this sweater. So you can see, I'm gently pulling that through. I'm gonna leave at least an inch tail, probably a little bit longer. I'll leave it like that. And then for something like this, I end up repositioning the project a lot. You kind of flip back and forth, that's fine. It's easier than trying to sew backwards. So I, I'm just gonna turn around right here and I'm just catching the back, of, I would say, every third or fourth knit stitch. And I'm getting close to the edge of that uh, moth hole and you'll see what we do when we get there. So again, I'm pulling this in. See that this loop back here gets smaller. I'm gonna slow down. I don't want it to be too tight. So I'm gonna leave a little bit there and go back and actually stretch that just a little bit. I'm gonna turn this guy around again. And also keep in mind, I've got my hand inside the sweater the entire time, so I'm not accidentally uh, mending one side to the other. So I'm, I'm making this third row right right next to that second because what we're really gonna end up doing when we get jump across this hole right here is we're we're laying in the threads so we can actually reweave that one little section of this sweater. Okay, so we've got all of our first set of stitches going going in here. Just so you can see you know, you know when you, so you know what you're looking at, we've gone kind of back and forth, back and forth, moving our way across that open hole. And then we've you know stitched a few lines past there, and now we're here. So now I can actually cut this yarn. I may actually re-thread up because I don't want to run out. No, no, it'll be fine. Um, but you can see there's a there's the original hole, and there's a few strands of yarn laying across that. So now we're gonna switch you know axes and start doing the same thing here. So we're set to start. We did kind of all of our up and down weaving. Now we're gonna start with our side to side weaving. And again, we're just gonna go through and catch uh, in the regular knitted fabric. We're gonna catch one up every maybe three or four uh, knits in that row. Okay, so we've got one pass through on our side to side stitches. We're gonna continue there until we get to that moth hole. All right, so we've gotten to the point where we're at the edge of the, the 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 void in the fabric and we're gonna get in here we're gonna start our stitch like normal at the end of the row put a few kind of foundation stitches in there and then I've gotten to the point where I need to start looking very closely at the yarns that are here and choosing to go these are the ones we've kind of built in across that hole we're gonna go over under over under over under just like we're weaving you know, weaving anything, that basic premise. And I got to the other side. I'm gonna pick up from the outside and then lay in a couple more stitches to secure the other side. We're gonna turn around and do it again. These ones, you wanna get really as close together as possible so that that mend really acts and looks like fabric. So I'm actually gonna use my needle to kind of nudge those woven stitches. We're gonna pack them in just like you do when you're weaving. I'm gonna pack those in just a little bit and then lay in as many as we can right there. I'm gonna do a few of those and we'll be back. So here we are. Uh, we've got most of our kind of weaving stitches done and I wanted to turn around the camera and get the best camera I could get and show you as close up as possible. So this is our original kind of hole area and this is all the kind of foundation stitches that we've laid in here and here to anchor this mend. I'm gonna see if I can get one or two more passes in here and then stitch a few more foundation rows on this side just to make sure this isn't going anywhere. I'm gonna flip it out from the, on the outside and check out our work. Okay, so you can see here is our original mend. Uh, there's some foundation stitches on both sides and then there's a kind of section we rewove. Re this is on the inside still, guys. I took out that square of basting in the contrast thread uh, and now I'm gonna leave about a half an inch uh, tail on that beginning and end just so we don't have to tie a knot. Those shouldn't go anywhere. Over time, as this gets worn or washed or, or cleaned, um, that's all gonna kind of start to fuzz together just a little bit. Let's look at it from the right side of the fabric. And you can see this is the section right here where we, where we reworked. And you can see there's a couple of little floats that are maybe just a little bit, a little off. But on this sweater, 
uh, when it's kind of viewed as a whole, whole with a W, uh, you know, you can see maybe just a little bit that that's where that was. So what I'm gonna do is uh, lay this over, give it a quick little steam with, with the iron, and uh, hopefully that's gonna help it kind of mat out just a little bit more. We're not ironing pressure on this, we're just letting some steam kind of let the fibers kind of loosen up and remember what they wanna be. Okay, so I slid a towel inside of the sweater. I got my iron heated up, and I'm just floating this over the top, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of steam. And then get in there and just not stretching this, just kind of massaging everything in place from the again, we're starting on the inside. We just a little more steam. Kind of those let you know, let those guys live together a little more happily. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the outside. So I just had to have a little moment to find the hole, which is a good sign. Uh, and our, the hole, as you can see, is right, or hopefully as you can't see, it's right there. There's just a little bit of a breakup in the texture. But again, just a little bit of steam. Fuzz it and, and massage it a little bit. I think we're doing pretty darn good. So uh, that's what's left of our original moth hole. It's right there. Uh, but I think we're looking pretty good for this sweater. So one more quick thought. Uh, we're going to use this tool. This is a kind of a fuzz comb thing. Uh, these used to be called defuzzits. Now it looks like it's a Restora brand. But all it really is is kind of a, a catchy little screen comb. And this is my favorite tool for kind of getting rid of fuzz on sweaters. Um, it, it's great for any little pill stuff. Um, so actually I'm going to take that and actually go over that men spot real quickly and see if that helps kind of bring some fuzz back to that section, kind of recomb the top area and mask it a little bit. I think it helps just a little bit. I don't want to get in there too deep because uh, we don't want to like lift some of the edges of this hole up to the outside. I think that helps us a little bit. But we're also going to use this, you know, while we've got the sweater here and we're paying some attention to it. Uh, I'm just going to redo, uh, just go over anywhere where the sweater has some wear and it, it really does lift off all those little pill areas. Thanks so much for watching this installment of The Domesticated Bear. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to post below and please subscribe if you want to see more content.